So welcome everyone to the first webinar for the MDC course in change making. We are very happy to welcome you all. Some of you are online and some of you are going to be able to see this video afterwards. We're going to be posting the video in the platform. So the idea for today is actually to introduce two different things in the same online course. We are going to the first part introduce what is, what is Amani about because it's, this is who we are running this program. And we are going to be talking about work, how work is changing and what employers want and what we can do as educators to better train our people. And in the second part, we're going to go more into logistics to explain what are the objectives of the course and how to deal with the platform. And uh, we're going to open to Q&As in these two different parts. So Roshan will start introducing the first part of the webinar and we are going to open to Q&As and then I'm going to continue with the logistics and the course itself and at the end we're going to open to Q&As. Again, if you have any problem during our conversation on any urgent question or any urgent comment, feel free to type them into the chat. You are at mute, so you won't be able to speak, but you are able to write. With that said, uh, let me say thank you to MDC for trusting us this online course. Thank you for all the people attending uh, the course today in person. It's always better to have people at live uh, listening to us and interacting with us, so thank you for that. And with that said, let me open the floor for Russian. And he's the one helping us to go through the first part of this program. Russian, the floor is yours. Mm. Uh, sorry, Russian, I will unmute you first because I mute everyone. So just give me one second. And now. Uh, All right, can you yeah. hear me now? Perfectly, yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, Ila. Um, hello, everyone. I am a co-founder of Amani Institute, along with Ila, and we were very um, pleased and excited to be uh, there at MDC last month uh, to, to facilitate uh, the workshop and uh, probably uh, met some of you there, so it's really nice to, to reconnect. Um, one of the things that came out from that workshop was um, an interest in hearing from Amani Institute a bit more about what we do and particularly about our work around workforce readiness. So we thought we'd uh, start this intro webinar um, with that, uh, sharing a little bit about what, what informs and influences our work around workforce readiness, uh, which we know is a, is a very important topic right now at Miami-Dade. So, so um, I'll go over a little bit of, of content looking at two studies um, and what they're, what they're telling us about uh, the, 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 the evolving nature of work, professional work today. Um, I'll start by this quick introduction to Amani Institute. Um, and um, here we are. Um, what we um, are all about is developing uh, individuals who have not just the knowledge and the skills, but also the global networks, uh, this personal understanding, and so on, to be able to take on the social challenges that they that be around them. We're doing this um, through creating new models of um, of education and and training, and. Um, our, our focus really is um, to help people to build the careers that they want. Uh, and for us, a meaningful career um, has an, uh, a component of making social change happen or being a change maker, um, as you all know, um, at uh, Miami Dade. So, uh, so that's a little bit about Amani Institute and why we do what we do. Uh, our two core programs are um, a master's equivalent program in social innovation uh, that we hold in Nairobi, in Kenya, um, and in Sao Paulo, in Brazil. But the programs are open to anyone from any part of the world. So um, right now we've been, we've been running for about five years and our students have come um, from over 35 different, different countries. Um, and they come to Nairobi or they come to Sao Paulo in Brazil uh, to do this, this master's uh, equivalent program. In addition to that, we also run customized trainings and customized workshops for uh, different types of organizations. They're typically universities or foundations or nonprofit organizations and, and even the art company. Um, and we focus really on building capacity around social innovation and being an innovator. Uh, more and more employers are, are finding it really um, interesting to help their staff be more creative and uh, more innovative and they bring us in to, to help with that. 
So those are the two things that we do. We run our education program, um, the masters, and we uh, we also uh, do custom training for different organizations. So in that sense, it's a it's a not a very uh, different model than many American universities. So um, uh, I, I like this picture a lot because it shows you. Um, and I don't think yeah. the lights are passing through. Can you double check that? I'm able to see um, the agenda. Okay, well, let me check. They're passing on my screen. Um, there it is, perfect, now yes. Now you can and, see? And, yeah, and if you can put play, so we have it in bigger size, that would be great. Put play, so it wasn't full screen before, but that was when you couldn't see it, uh, I think. Let me, let me try again and see if it's on bigger size now. Can you see it now on, big si on the big screen? Not no? really, but it's fine. Okay, so let me go back. Um, okay, are you seeing it now? We are seeing it in a small screen, but let's get going with that, it's fine. Okay. Um, okay, well, we didn't miss any really important slides, so I will um, come to uh, this question that we wanted to to address: um, How is work changing today? And I'm going to use. Um, well, before I move, Ila, are you able to see the slides moving now? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Great. So um, I am going to use to to describe this. I'm going to use a study from an organization called Escape the City um, that um, that has done a lot of work to understand um, how it is that uh, the modern day professional uh, would like to work and, and how they would like their workplace to be. So Escape the City um, about eight months ago published uh, this study um, called um, Why Do So Many Corporate Professionals Want to Escape? Uh, and while they were studying uh, primarily um, for-profit companies, I think that the lessons are quite um, uniform around uh, all types of organizations. So um, some of the things that are really changing the way we will work going forward, um, one is uh, what I call the remote working and co-working explosion. And this is basically people all around the world saying, you know, I don't need to live in just one place um, and I don't need to live necessarily in the city I'm working. Thanks to technology, I can work uh, in many different places. And uh, a great example of this is a guy called Steve Munro, who founded a co-working space in Indonesia, in Bali. And he, um, like many people, was, had become dissatisfied with his uh, corporate life. And um, he moved, he picked up his young family, quit his job, picked up his young family, and moved to Bali in Indonesia. And he thought he was doing a really radical thing. But when he got there, uh, his, uh, he found there were so many people there before him that, he's, his, in his own words, he was late to the party in Bali. And he then went on to found a co-working space uh, called the Impact Hub in Bali. And, uh, and today it's, it's incredibly popular and attracts people from all around the world uh, to go there and work. And, uh, and you can work in you know, um, a tank top and shorts, um, overlooking rice paddies with organic coffee um, if you want. Uh, it's, it's, I've been there. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, to partner with that, another, um, another person, a guy called Ben Keen, uh, based in London, decided to create something called Tribe Wanted Bali. So he put up a website where he invited people to come and join him in working from Bali for anywhere from two weeks to three months. And um, within, within a month of him putting up that website, 30 people from uh, mostly Australia and Europe had, uh, had gone over to Bali to work from there. So. What this is saying is that there's um, a number of people are increasingly seeing that their life doesn't have to be tied to the city in which they're working and that they want a certain quality of life um, that they can make choices uh, to work around that. This is obviously tied to the second point, um, which we call Freelancers Unite. Um, and one study says that by 2020, freelancers will account for 40% of the global workforce. 
this is a pretty incredible number. Uh, so that this is what this is saying that 40% of the global workforce uh, would would trade off job security, healthcare benefits, and so on for the freedom um, that being a freelancer allows. Uh, flexible work hours, flexible vacation policies, flexible location policies, and and things like that. And more and more young people are are wanting to do wanting to do that. All of this is only made possible by uh, productivity tools, and that's that's the third point over here. So uh, tools like Slack and Google Hangout, uh, Skype, um, uh, you know, the tool that we're using for this uh, conversation, telepresence, and we're just at the start of the revolution of uh, productivity tools, and a. Um, a great example of that is this line by Marty Cooper. So some of you might know the name Marty Cooper. He um, was the engineer at Motorola who um, um, played a big role in inventing the cell phone and was the first the person who made the first ever um, mobile phone call in US history. He made it um, on Fifth Avenue in New York. And um, I was fortunate to interview Marty um, about 10 years ago. And he was in his 80s at that time. And um, I asked him, so you know, you've achieved everything that anyone could want to do in a career. How are you spending your time these days? And he said, you know, I spend, um, I don't work a lot anymore, but I, I work in the mornings and I spend 50% of my work time exploring social media. And he said that he believes that we are just at the beginning of the social media revolution in business. Um, so for all of us who think, well, you know, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and, and all of that may not be entirely for us, um, here's one of the great innovators of the last century saying that we're just at the beginning of what um, social media is going to, to do for the global economy. <clears throat> So basically, working online and internationally will be the norm um, as we as we go forward. I would like to move to a second part of how work is changing. So, um, and this is uh, particularly the role that people under 35 are going to have in the workforce. So, um, uh, people under 35 have very different career aspirations than their parents, and one um, one. Um, really big moment in the last decade um, was the recession and the crisis, the financial crisis of 2008. Um, and that caused a crisis of meaning in a lot of young people. Uh, they felt that um, whether it was big stable companies that collapsed or governments that collapsed, um, that their faith in large organizations and the security and stability that those organizations provide um, was found to be misplaced. Um, and so if they don't have job security, then why are they working in a big soulless um, organization when they can get more passion, more impact, and more freedom um, working in smaller smaller types of organizations? And, and, and as, as human beings, for all of us, that, those are all really important. And for many, many young people of the millennial generation, um, you know, survey after survey is showing that um, passion, impact, and freedom is more important than money and power. Um, and I think it's really important to note that as uh, we go back to technology and how it's making our lives a lot more comfortable and reducing a lot of our costs. So what, what this is leading to is many people saying that we're moving from the industrial economy to the information economy to now what's been called the purpose economy. Um, so that's the rise of social impact work, of change making, uh, and connecting your work to the values that you have. Um, there's a lot of people who no longer want to separate their personal life and their professional life. They want the two to be integrated and actually support each other. And one of the ways in which this is perhaps most seen is um, the field of entrepreneurship, um, seen as a increasingly a viable career path. Um, so um, everyone, um, an entrepreneur, if you will. And this doesn't mean that everyone has to be, um, you know, someone who will create a large company, but that everyone could start their own business or start their own uh, micro enterprise um, and and make some money. And we're already seeing with. Um, with companies like Airbnb and Uber and places like that, people are able to use resources they have to, to have a business on the side uh, from, from what they already do. So entrepreneurship is increasingly being seen as a viable career path. And it's one of the fastest growing disciplines in, um, uh, in universities, but also that there are so many entrepreneurship programs cropping up um, out, outside universities as well. So, 
this is what um, you know surveys uh, looking at people under the age of 35 are really coming up uh, coming up with that the the career aspiration for security and stability and and buying property um, and that kind of things are, are starting to give way um, to people who want to to, to have meaning and freedom and passion in, in their work and are less invested in buying things and more invested in um, buying experiences, if you will. Um, so so that's, that's a really important trend as well. So alongside working online and internationally, we're seeing that people under 35 are looking at the world of work very, very differently. So here's a quote from the report that I'm talking about. Uh, that I think sums it all up. Um, so it says, small businesses offer benefits which increasing numbers of people find enticing. Equity, unlimited holidays, lax dress codes, and work socials. But above all, they feed the appetite for taking ownership of their work, having a tangible influence on their company, and finding a genuine sense of purpose. So this is something that may or may not resonate with you right now, uh, but it really resonates with the work that we've been doing at Amani Institute and the way that um, we and many other people see the economy, economy growing. So I might ask you to think about then, um, how might we better prepare Miami-Dade college students for this changing world of work? What is it that we do now? that uh, helps, uh, helps them prepare to move in this direction? And what is it that we do now that perhaps less so uh, prepares them uh, for this, that maybe is slightly more traditional? So maybe we can come back to this question in the Q&A section. I'd, I'd be very, very interested to hear your thoughts on this. So let's move to, to a second part of this. So in this new world, in this new economy that I've described, what do employers want? What, what really matters to employers? So we did a study uh, at Amani Institute a few years ago to look at uh, this very question, what is it that employers are looking for? And we found a few interesting things. So the first thing we found was that previous experience in the field of work was more important than an advanced degree. Um, so this might be you know, quite, quite interesting for a community college to, to think about. Uh, so rather than an advanced degree, if alongside the programs you do, um, you know, giving them um, experience in the field that they want to work in, or, um, for which for many of them they already know that when they come there, um, that's, that's actually going to hold them in very good stead because employers are really interested in, in experience, practical experience, more so than an advanced um, degree. What are the skills that employers are most looking for? Well, what they told us was that the skills they're looking for are leadership, entrepreneurship, uh, which is kind of entrepreneurship but inside an organization, so taking leadership to create new things inside an, uh, an organization or a company. Problem solving or creativity skills, so um, things are changing very quickly and we need, uh, the one thing we do need is the creativity to overcome the, the challenges that stand in our way. Um, so, for example, a common complaint amongst employers was when a staff member went to them uh, with saying, uh, hey, we have a problem, without also offering a solution uh, to that problem, so that they wanted to dump the problem on their boss's doorstep as opposed to try and solve it themselves. And, and that was, kind of, you know, for many employers, the big no-no. And a, um, a fourth aspect of that is communication. So communication skills, whether online, whether in person, um, uh, are really, really important. Working across cultures, working across uh, different media and technology um, is also extremely important. So these were the key skills that employers told us uh, they needed and also that they found relatively lacking in uh, people with a traditional education. So I think that there's a great opportunity for current educators to start to think about how do we bring these skills more into our curriculum. Another really interesting thing that employers said was that who you are matters as much or even more as what you know and what you can do. And this is really interesting because um, if you ask most employers and even those of you who have staff uh, that you manage, um, you could think about this as well. Uh, when you ask employers what is the thing that they value uh, the most in their most um, in their favorite employee, um, what you get is not a set of skills. You get a set of personality traits. So you get things like um, that person's a natural leader 
or that person comes to me with solutions and not problems, or that person has a very positive attitude, um, that person takes on responsibility when others don't want to, and things like that. So you get a, a set of things that um, are really more about the person than about the work or the skills that they have. And likewise, if you, if you ask employers or managers about their least favorite employees, uh, the ones that give them the biggest headaches, you will likewise get a set of personality traits and not that they're really, they don't know Excel or something like that. It's not about what they cannot do, it's really about personality qualities that, that don't fit the work culture um, that the person is trying to, to create. So who you are matters as much to your employer um, as what you do. So um, uh, when it comes to this, and, and this is particularly targeted at, at your students, 56% um, of employers uh, look for an online presence or an online portfolio, while only 7% of uh, job searchers have one. So the resume is, is moving online. Um, it's uh, something that people are, um, uh, are increasingly going to be Googling you, um, looking for evidence of work that you have done online. Um, and if you don't have that, that just makes your, uh, their job harder uh, to, assess, to assess you. So one thing we do at Amani Institute is that we ask everyone to create an online presence or an online portfolio because that helps them to make the case for uh, the work that they have done and, that the work that they, and the work that they want to do. And increasingly, there were, people are going to be looking, therefore, at e-portfolios, at uh, things like badges and competency-based assessments, and not grades or, or necessarily degrees. Um, in fact, today I met with an organization here in Africa whose tagline is, the resume is dead, long live your career. Um, so so uh, it's really important to start to think about uh, the declining uh, importance of the resume um, and the increasing importance of being uh, visible online for people to see evidence of what you have done in your career till now. So a LinkedIn, um, a LinkedIn account and a LinkedIn profile is the bare minimum, like everybody should have that. But, uh, but what else can you show a prospective employer? So that might be something uh, you want to talk to your students, um, the students you know about. Um, one of the things that underlies the work that we do is this understanding, that the demand for smart professionals who are technologically literate, globally aware, and operational rationally flexible will significantly outpace supply over the next 10 or 15 years. So a lot of people that are watching the human resources space or watching um, the way the world is, uh, of work is changing um, feel that the demand um, of people is going to outpace the supply of people who can fit those skills. So for an institu institution that, that has 165,000 uh, students, that's a really, really interesting um, um, opinion to, to consider. So um, that's my, my follow-up question to that then, is how then are Miami Dade College students being prepared for the needs of employers? What are we doing right? What could we be doing better? So let me end with just um, this, one, uh, this one quote that perhaps sums up everything that I've been talking about um, till now. Um, and it comes from uh, one of our alumni at Amani Institute, who is a um, former, a very senior journalist uh, from Italy. Um, uh, she ran a magazine that was like the National Geographic uh, of Italy. And uh, what she says is, um, no workplace, no work day, no job description. No boundaries in our activities. We must be dynamic to best shape what we can do and what we can give in any job, from journalism to medicine. It's like the Renaissance, where the most successful were the ones who explored. So let me leave you with that, uh, with that thought um, as we perhaps go into the Q&A section. Um, so Russian, I'm, thank I'm you. More than happy to take yeah, thank you very much, Roshan. Uh, very enlightening. So I will ask uh, people that want to have a question uh, or maybe even a comment or a contradiction about what Roshan said, feel free to let me know in the chat and I will unmute you. I'm going to also pose here in the chat and the two main questions that Roshan were um, saying to everyone. So here is the first one is, how are we better trained MDC students for this changing world of work? And how are MDC students being prepared for the need of employers? Uh, so I have, uh, Christopher, do you have a question? So let me 
um, block you uh, and mute you. So now you're on mute. Uh, so you can go ahead and ask your question. Uh, Christopher. And then I don't know if Josh was also trying to make a question. So I will just in case Josh also unmute. Uh, so Christopher and Josh, if you want to make a comment, a question, so now you're on mute. Let me see. And what I'm going to do to make it maybe even easier. So for a moment, I will unmute everyone. So feel free to speak if you have a question or a comment. And as soon as someone starts speaking, I will mute the other ones so we can all hear. Trust me, he'll love it. So now that I unmute everyone. So I would love to hear some comments. Okay, so I have. So, Rice, if you want to actually say your question, feel free to speak because you're on mute now. Okay, sorry. So, right, so do you want to speak up your... Okay, so I will tell your comment here. I read it for everyone. Thank you for emphasizing the importance of online presence. I feel that more than ever, students and everyone need to be aware of how they carry themselves on public domains, such as on social media or online forums, and so forth. Yeah, thank you very much for the comment. Uh, so Christopher says that he has not a microphone, so I will read his question, and then, Roshan, you can go ahead and answer it. It was a state that 66% of prospective employers don't have an online resume. Can you reconfirm that source for that claim, please? The resource. Sure, I think um, the actual... Uh... Sorry, uh, Roshan, I stopped. Do you mind starting over with your question, with the answer? Sure. Sure. Um, yeah, so let me, I will, I will mute everyone and then I'll mute you. So just one second. I'll let you know when, when you can speak. Okay, there you are, you can go. Great, so uh, thanks Christopher for the question. Um, the quote was actually that 56% of employers will uh, look for a prospective employee, will, will search for a prospective employee online but only 7% of prospective job seekers actually have an online resume. So just to clarify um, clarify what that was. Um, I, I don't remember off the top of my head the resource, but I'm happy to, uh, to find it and send it to you or okay. send it to everyone. Yeah, we, we, we can even post it on the platform. Thanks, Christopher. So if anyone has other common questions, and maybe how do you see that dialogue with what is going on in MDC? with this idea of become a change maker campus, that makes sense or not. So we'd love to hear some comments around that. And feel free to just write it down on the chat because you're all mute. Okay. So let me see five more seconds to see if we have more questions or comments. Is that the case? Okay, so uh, if there are not more questions for now, and of course we can continue this conversation. Oh, great, uh, Evelyn, sorry. Uh, it's coming now your question. Um, I think it is trying to figure how in our campuses we do this, right? Do you have any comments yeah. on that, Russian? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it is. I think it is true. It's um, in a large campus. It um, is going to be complicated, but I actually think. Um, a community college with its, its focus on um, more um, preparing people more directly for the workforce than perhaps a traditional four-year academic uh, campus might in fact have an advantage over a traditional university because, um, you know, when we were there, we heard about majors such as um, being um, a funeral parlor um, and, and things like that, and that's, you know, that's extremely, extremely practical. So um, I think in helping, helping your students to uh, to be trained in order to get jobs that they are looking for and serve the needs of employers, um, a community college might in fact have an, a slight advantage over a traditional academic um, university. So uh, my encouragement might be then not to not to go too much in the direction of a traditional university if that's not uh, what the strength of the um, the college is. So yes, it will be complex in a large um, college, but uh, there may be some strengths that you can build off as well. 
So it is. And I see Evelyn's question um, that uh, do we have any sample institutions who have created a roadmap? Um, I believe that uh, Ashoka, you that um, you know where where that created the Change Maker Campus uh, designation uh, does have. Um, examples of this, and, and we can uh, you pass the question um, on to them to, to share that with you. And if you want to go ahead, Roshan, with Virginia comments also in the next one. Yes. Um, how do we have faculty who might not be as comfortable in this online world help students? I think that's an excellent um, uh, question and, and, and a really interesting um, potential bottleneck um, over there. So, um, um, I would imagine, in some ways, the students uh, will teach the faculty. So, um, so it, it, I think you know, if, if anything, it would be um, the way that faculty are encouraged anywhere. Um, I imagine, in terms of you know, grants um, and um, encouragement to bring a more online aspects into the program, into the curriculum, um, that could, that might then have to happen at the level of, of deans or, or above. But um, I think that there could be ways to encourage faculty from, from a, an administrative level, um, but I might also wonder if faculty are, the, are um, the likely, you know, best place for this and if there might have to be other resources on campus as well. Yeah, great. Okay. Thanks, Virginia, Evelyn, Christopher for the questions, uh, Raisa too. Okay, so I'm sure it's going to be, this is an ongoing conversation. I don't think we're going to finish it now. we have been able to embrace it completely now. So it would be nice if you want to keep reflecting on this. The slides are going to be on the platform. And if you have more comments ongoing, feel free always to put them on the platform. So with that piece, um, we are going to go to the second part of the presentation. So I will return back. Okay. Okay, so hopefully by now you will be seeing my screen. So if some of you can just type in the chat, yes, uh, we are seeing your screen, that would be great. Just to be sure that you are able to follow me. Thank you, Evelyn. Uh, great, perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, so you have received a, a, a link uh, in the email that been sent. And this link will take you directly to this uh, page where you have uh, the Miami Date logo, you have the course, and it's asking you, so here's the logo, it's a course about change making. And you have an activation code that you can, uh, you have to input in order to join the course. And the code is very simple, it's MDC, that's all. And then you will be joining the, the course. So what I'm going to help you go through is first go through the syllabus to understand uh, how it's going to work and then give you some visit around the platform so you can see how to use it. So as soon as you log in, and, and you will need to create a, a new user to get into the platform. So you will create a new user, and then you will get into this website that you are seeing now. And um, here in the in the welcome tab, so with this one here on, on the left, will appear this message um, with a basic information of how to use the platform. And we are going to go much more in detail now about how to use it. So if we go to the second tab, so the one that says weekly modules, and you click on it, the first tab is about introduction. And here we have the syllabus that I'm going to open now to, to, to go with you through that. And then the welcome webinar that I used to be the information. And here you will find then the video and the slides from the presentation. So if we go to the syllabus and you will see that the syllabus has some objective learnings, some structure how it's going to work, and also the topics. Uh, so while that is happening, I'm going to open the syllabus here in my PDF. Uh, right. So in objectives, what we really want to do through the course is to help you become change makers. We all know that we already are change makers, but we want to do it just, okay, uh, just to actually experiment in some activities to be a change maker that then you can easily teach if you want in classroom to other students. So really the main um, objective of the course is to help you go through what is to be a change maker. Uh, so let me see someone, your signal is going out. Can you still see me? Just, is some of you know, we, can't, we can't see you, your, your um, video cam has gone. Ah, you're back now. And can you see my screen? 
We can see the screen too. Great. So the program is saying me that maybe if the internet is too low, I need to shut down my camera. So I may need to do that. But uh, if you can see my screen, that's great. Um, so I was saying really the objective is to help you to become a change maker and to develop these skills. And then you can actually use these skills and, and this exercise in classroom if you want. So the logistics, how is it going to work? So everything will happen in the online platform. We're going to send you weekly reminder emails about the platform and activities, but all the activities will happen inside the platform. And if you don't receive this invitation or you don't know how to do it, uh, please email me. And I will put my email at the end in the chat if you have any issue with this. But everyone should have received the email by now. So the online course will have four weeks and it's organized around the four skills of a change maker. So uh, the first week is going to be around leadership. The second one is around uh, empathy, problem solving, and collaboration. And each week has three sections. So if we are under leadership, we will have three sections. If we are under empathy, we will have three sections, and so on. So what are these three sections? The first one is preparation material. So that means that they are articles, uh, videos, um, magazine reviews, book chapters, for you to read and, and watch and about the topic. Then the second section is an activity. So you will need to understand the activity and actually do the homework around the activity that is linked to the topic of the week. And the third piece is a reflection. So combining the readings and the videos and the activity that you're going to be doing, how this comes together and what reflections come from that both things combined. And this will be repeated every week with all the four topics. So the preparation materials are all on the platform. They all have links to the platform. If you have any issues, something is not working or opening, let us know, but all being tested and should be working. Um, in terms of requirements for graduation or for the certificate of this course, we have mainly two deliverables. So one is a weekly assignment. So we expect you send one assignment per week to help you develop the skills of leadership, empathy, problem solving, and collaboration and also reflect on this activity and the readings. When we say reflective practice, we expect at least some comments. It has not to be like an essay or a paper, but mainly just as comments of what was the readings and what was the activity. And I will show you all this where it's on the platform. So then as I was telling you, um, we have topics. So today we are actually in this moment with a welcome webinar. And from now, so Wednesday until the next Wednesday, it's going to start happening the first module that is around leadership. So you will go through the readings and the videos, then you will check the activity, you will do the activity, and before next Wednesday, you is a deadline for you to return back the activity and make some reflections about it. And that same day, we start the empathy module, and then again, you have one week to read the materials, do the activity, and reflect on the modules. Same thing with problem solving, same thing with a collaboration. And we are going to have a closing webinar on July 14th at this same time using this same platform, GoToWebinar. Uh, we already sent the link, but we we're going to send it again. For we all discuss how was it for modules, what activities worked, what didn't work, what things can be changed to do in classroom or not, and also to discuss the reading if there are any questions around them. So let me see, I have a question here from Evelyn. And yes, so we won't have uh, online webinars. So we only have two online webinars, as you can see. So let me show again here the syllabus. So we have one welcome webinar today, and we will have a last closing webinar on July 14th. What is going to happen in between? It's mainly a self-paced course. So you will have to deliver the activities every week, but we won't have an interaction online like this webinar, only by the end. Is that answer to your question, Evelyn? So what you need to put in your calendar is the deadlines to deliver the activities and the reflection that is every Wednesday. Um, <clears throat> okay. So I would say that, uh, so people that is not able to do the activities during the time frame, send me an email, let me know, so we can check individually that cases. Yes? Uh, thanks so much for your question. That's great. So if you have a problem with this uh, timeline, let us know and we can discuss that. So let me see if up to here we have any questions with the syllabus and with the organization of the course. So welcome. So again, it's four modules. 
we have only two webinars. One is today, one is at the end. And you have mainly deliverables every Wednesday, starting from next Wednesday. And um, readings, activity, and reflection, that's the structure. Okay, so let me know, go to the website. And of course, if you have questions uh, about it, let me know. I'm going to turn off my video because I've seen that why internet is quite slow. So you will stop seeing me, but you will still see my screen. And so, okay. So we have, um, as we said, we have four weekly modules. The first one is leadership. So as you can see, again, it's three sections, preparation, activity, and reflection. And the same goes for empathy. The same goes for problem solving. And the same goes for collaboration. So the suggestion is that each Wednesday, so today, you can start with the reading and, ref and the preparation material. In every section, you, you will have mandatory material. And it doesn't mean, I mean, we, we won't check if you're reading all of them, but definitely if you're putting them mandatory because we recommend you to actually go through them and read them because they are good. And we have especially designed for you uh, to, to consider it. And then you have optional materials in case you want to go further into your knowledge. And sometimes we're going to recommend books or we're going to recommend long articles. So in case you have the time, you can go and go deeper. And it would be nice then if people have other comments about materials and their leadership here in comments, you can put like, uh, you can write here, hello, here is another good article. And you can put the, the link and you can put post comment. So that's also a way to start sharing knowledge among this network. So here you can accumulate not only what Amani is considering important for you to read, but what you consider is important for other ones to read. Yeah. So when you are done with that, you have two options to return back to the menu. You can just go to next activities at the bottom page, or you can return back to weekly modules, go to leadership, and then go to activities. Yeah. And so. Let me go to activities. I see I have in one question. Let me see, let me read your question. So Dr. Charlotte has mentioned, I believe you all will be working on your rubric. Will we go over that at some point as well? So the rubric is not really part of the online training. Uh, that will be like a separate activity. So we won't be discussing that in the modules, but, uh, but outside that. And I think that will be more coordinated by Dr. Charlotte at that asked. Uh, but uh, thanks, Evelyn. And so in, in the activities, you will see that you will have an introduction for the activity. So for example, in this case, what we are saying is that in order to be a leader uh, in the social sector as a change maker, first it's important to discover what is the problem you want to solve. So we will ask you to actually identify a problem in campus or outside campus, but better if it's in campus, that you want to solve, that you feel that it's important someone to solve, and you want to take the action and the lead on solving this. So for now, what we're going to ask is to do a root cause analysis tool. And that's a very important tool that you will be need to be doing. And uh, that tool, uh, we have some explanation here how to do the tool. And then you also will have here an example about how to do it. And then you also will have here homework uh, to, to actually deliver the root cause analysis tool. And you have to upload it here. So in order to upload this tool, you will need to click here on the browse bottom, then you will need to find the document you want to, and then you will just put open, and you're going to be able then to upload it. If you have any trouble doing that, let me know, but I think it's, so just click here, you will upload your document, and then you are able to, if you want, you can upload it, yeah? So as you see here, we have a reminder about the deadline. So it's June 22nd, that's again, it's next Wednesday. And uh, I won't go through what is exercise about because it's explained here, but if you have any problem or any questions about it, always feel free to go to comments and ask a question how to do it. And again, I think it would be nice that the Q's and A's not only come from the money team, but you can also help each other to answer these questions. Yeah? So in each module, as I said, we have three parts. So we have the readings, then we have the activity and the homework to delivered and then we have the reflections so here it's mainly it's like a forum to discuss all together questions that are going to be around the topic the lectures that we give you at the beginning and the activity 
So we are putting all together for you to reflect in a holistic way. And we expect comments from everyone, not only responding to these questions, but responding to each other about these questions. Okay, so let me say I have a question here. Do we save the root cause trees as a PDF in order to upload it into the site? So the site accepts any different formats, could be a PDF, could be a PowerPoint, could be a Word document. So whatever is better for you, that will be fine for us. Did that answer your question, Raisa? Yeah? And so thank you for the questions. So please, if you have any questions while I'm speak, speaking, feel free to type it into the chat. Um, so Raisa was asking about the format to upload the, um, the homework. So you can do it in any format, that's okay. So if we go to the second week, it will happen the same thing. So you already have the readings in case you're very fast and you're able to read everything on leadership. You can already start with empathy. We have the mandatory readings. Some of them are readings, some of them are videos. Then we have optional books if you want to go further or longer videos. Uh, then if we go to next activities, so we are going to ask you to actually do some interviews. And we are, going to, I give, we are giving you here some tools how to do interviews. We are explaining why interviews, that it's a tool to develop empathy. And then you will be, again, submitting your homework. The deadline is already there. And, and you will actually just upload it here. And it's the same size things. I don't want to go through all the modules, but it's exactly the same way how it works, the force of them. Um, so let me stop here. So if there are any questions about the logistics about the course, how it works, so the syllabus, and uh, the platform itself, if there is any problem or any question about how this works. So you're all mute, so you can only type, I guess you want to type. So let me know if there are questions there. So let me see if I can put my camera again. Um, I don't think if I can see my camera again, but you still can see my, my screen. No, I can't. OK. So if there are not any more questions, and I will ask you to, as soon as you finish this uh, webinar, to go to the link that we send you, uh, to enter the platform, to get familiar with it. You can even put a picture if you want. And here you can um, put a picture, put a description of who you are, so people also know who you are. And then the last thing that is important into the platform is that um, you have here a chat. This is an online chat. So everyone that is in the platform, uh, you will see who is there at the platform. And you are able to actually talk with these people. Uh, so in this case, there is no one. So I cannot chat with anyone. Let me see if all my classes. So here we have, yes, a lot of online people. So in that case, I can say hi to someone. I can ask for clarifications. I can uh, just discuss, I have travel in doing this. If you see me online or Russian online or any of you is online, you can also help each other to use the platform through the online, pla online chat. Uh, so with that said, um, I'm looking forward to see if there are any more questions in the next two minutes. And if there is not, uh, I guess the next invitation will be to as soon as we finish here, get into the platform, see if it's easy to use or not. I'm going to be typing our emails here in case you have any travel doing it. So that's my email and that's Russian email. And if you don't have any problem with the platform, then I would suggest just go and start on reading the material for this week and adventure into the first activity. So let me see if, Rosan, you have any final uh, comments before we close the webinar. Um, only to say that we're really looking forward to uh, working with all of you and uh, interacting with you uh, throughout the course. So um, uh, welcome uh, to the course and uh, see you online. Uh, great, Evelyn. Thanks for the question. So the recording is going to be inside the platform. So if you go to the introduction, I will put it under Welcome Webinar. That's where you will find the, this online webinar that we are recording now. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, we have more than 26 uh, people attending the webinar. I know there were actually two more people that were not able to join, but they were trying. So I think that if all of these 26 people, plus Rosan and myself and everyone else that wants, 
we start populating this website, uh, this platform with comments, with activities and helping each other, I think that would be amazing. And we are going to learn not only from what Amane has proposed, but what you can propose and help each other. So with that said, thank you very much. Thank you again, MDC. Thank you for the opportunity and looking forward to interacting and learning with all of you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.